When we think of traditional Southwestern jewelry, we often think of squash blossom necklaces and concha belts. And what we don't generally think of is that the, those forms really are not Southwestern. They actually came from Spain, and before that, they often came from North Africa and the Moors. So for example, this is an older squash blossom. This probably dates to the 1930s. And it's, and it's very beautifully made. All of the beads and the blossoms, as well as the crescent, or the naja, are handmade. But when we look at this, what we don't think of is the fact that the crescent in this form entered the region, the southwest, on the bridles of Spanish and Mexican horsemen. And that comes directly from the Moors who controlled Spain for a long period of time. In North Africa, the crescent is a, an amulet that wards off the evil eye. And so you put that amulet on your horse to, to protect your horse while you're on it. And these squash blossoms started off life as pomegranate blossoms. When they came into the Southwest, the Navajo looked at these symbols and made them their own. So the crescent got renamed a Naja, and it became a form that, when put together into a necklace, is immediately identifiable, probably around the world, as being from the Southwest. Very quickly, little pieces of turquoise started to get added, particularly on the Naja. In this case, the artist either really liked turquoise or had a lot more turquoise available to them, and they put 11 pieces on the Naja. This is a very Navajo squash blossom. The silver work dominates. The turquoise has been added as an ornament and as a very important element, but not the driving element in terms of what you see. Once the squash blossom form was standardized, other people, besides the Navajo, adopted the form and started to use it. So our next example is a, a Zuni squash blossom necklace. This is a necklace that I'm actually very fond of for multiple reasons. First, because it's a beautiful piece. And second, because it was made by a Zuni artist called Della Casa Apa. And while women were probably working on making jewelry from the very beginning, Della Casa Apa is one of the first named women artists that we have in the region. And she's known for her cluster work. This is a petty point necklace. These stones, boy, are there are a lot of them, were individually cut to fit into this necklace. This is a form of squash blossom where the turquoise is much more dominant. And that's a very Zuni example of a squash blossom. The third example of a squash blossom necklace that I've brought with me today is a Santo Domingo version. So this is a squash blossom that has no silver in it at all. And yet it has all of the requisite items to be a squash blossom. It has a naja, and it has the blossoms themselves. And in this case, what we have is a Depression era necklace that was made with standard shell hishi, so these are shell beads that were strung and then ground together. And interspersed amongst that, we've got the naja, which is inlay, believe it or not, on black plastic. This is battery casing plastic. And each of the blossoms and then these other pieces, pendants, are also on black plastic. And we have small pieces of turquoise inlaid with some shell. The black plastic looks like jet. And then here at the very tip of the naja, we have two little bright red pieces of inlay. And these are not coral. These actually are plastic. And this was probably plastic that came from a comb or came from a toothbrush. It was hard to get good quality materials. But people were still making jewelry, and they were using their creativity and their whimsy to make some wonderful pieces that today are highly valued because they are so creative.
And the squash blossom is an example of that. The last piece that I've brought that shows Spanish influence in particular is a little part of a concha belt. Now this concha belt was made by a Hopi artist, and, but it looks very similar to concha belts that would be made by Navajo and other uh, Zuni and other artists. The word concha is Spanish for shell. And this shell shape entered the region as parts of bridles, and people immediately realized that conchas are shells. And shells, of course, have a lot of the same meaning that turquoise does in terms of water in a very arid region. Silversmiths started initially making just silver conchas and then slowly added a single piece of turquoise in the center of each concha. And then people got a little more ebullient and turquoise became much more common, and there are some concha belts that are completely covered with turquoise. This one has a nice balance, I think, between the turquoise and the silver.